chances are uh, many people are not concerned uh, about the Garland versus Vanderstock Supreme Court case that uh, they just heard oral arguments on on October 8th. And I believe most people aren't necessarily concerned about the Second Amendment aspects of this because they look at it like, well, it's just, you know, what they're talking about is they're just talking about that part of the receiver that can come without a serial number. It's easily changed out. And many people aren't worried about it. As a matter of fact, uh, two of the more conservative uh, Supreme Court justices, uh, Amy Coney Barrett and Roberts, are also verbally not necessarily worried about that. Like, it's just, well, it's just one part. What's the big deal? Well, it's the verbiage that is involved in this as well. And this is the part that is very dangerous because keep in mind, just keep in mind that the current Supreme Court uh, won't necessarily always be the Supreme Court. You know, they'll, they'll be other justices someday. And also keep in mind that if you happen to have a president that would just let the ATF just let them go and be whatever they want to be, so to say, uh, freely, just kind of let the chains off, so to say, of the ATF, what this could really mean what could happen is it's the verbiage. It's this idea that it can be modified. So this rifle can be modified into a ghost gun is ultimately what they're saying. And then there's a high likelihood because it's easily modifiable, easily modifiable is the verbiage that they use regarding these receivers is then they could not only take that particular rifle, but they can then at that point argue that any gun that is easily modifiable into what they deem as an illegal weapon, whether it be a ghost gun, a machine gun, a short barreled rifle, a short barrel shotgun, like whatever it is, if it could be easily modifiable, which everything I just mentioned can be, um, then they could take those as well. So in other words, Glock, you know, Glock didn't invent the Glock switch, That's, but some other company did, and then they put these out there, and now all of a sudden it's easily modifiable. Um, one could argue that you could just easily take off the upper of a rifle, slap on a short barrel, now you got a short barrel rifle, easily modifiable. Uh, you could take a shotgun, you just saw off the barrel, easily modifiable. And you kind of see what I'm getting at here is once the argument from the Supreme Court is declared that you can't have a weapon that is easily modifiable into this thing, this, call it a ghost gun or whatever you want to call it then it opens up a realm of really total disarmament, like just the end of the Second Amendment, literally. Um, this is something that... I don't really know how you change it at this point, because it's at some point the Supreme Court is going to make their decision in the spring. And... I, I don't know. I don't know about this one, to be honest. Um, because I think, that, and this is really the problem with most of the governing bodies of America, is that nobody really just says, well, it just means this simple thing. They always got to add in things. They got to change things and alter things. And, you know, it's, they can't just say that, you know, you can't have a gun without a serial number. <laughs> it can't just be that. Because I don't necessarily think anybody has a problem with that. 
It's just really the nature of the parts, if that makes sense, and how it's being worded. And because of the nature of the parts, if you can access these parts and then easily change a legal firearm into an illegal firearm, then they're going to, that becomes the problem. Because I would argue almost every firearm can be easily modified. I mean, if you were a gunsmith, you could do whatever you wanted with any firearm pro to some degree. You know, but if you were freely able to do whatever you wanted, I mean, I you know, you've ever seen people modify cars? I mean, shoot, that's harder. You know, imagine what people could do with guns if you're just kind of free to do whatever you wanted. There'd be some really interesting things out there, that's for sure. So I think this is a dangerous one. I've heard a couple other people bring it up, um, but there's not a lot of talk about this case. And I think it's because, like I led with, I think most people kind of don't care because they're like, well, it's just a gun without a serial number. I don't need that. I don't have one of those. You know, that's fine. Um, but I think it's much bigger than that. Um, it's not just you can't have ghost guns. <laughs> when you start saying the parts that are easily changeable and easily modifiable are the problem, and then you're digging into something. You're digging us into a hole that we may never get out of. Um, and I, I just don't know about this one. I really don't. Um, and I think the other piece is, is that you've seen with like the, the you know, the other one where the where they open up constitutional carry from coast to coast. As soon as that particular case was, you know, the Supreme Court ruled in favor of people's ability to carry outside their home. Um, suddenly there was like more anti-Second Amendment laws. Like I have less freedom now than I did before that case. Like people just double down. So if you don't think that they're going to double down with a Second Amendment victory in the Supreme Court, um, mm, I really don't know about this one.